my art darlings. Now the art here with another speed coloring. Today, since I thought this piece is based off of Medusa, I could tell you some interesting facts ab about her. Let's see what you know and don't know about the infamous Gorgon Medusa. The Gorgon Medusa is arguably Greek mythology's most famous being. Everyone has seen her face at least once, be it in movies like Percy Jackson, Clash of the Titans, video games like Assassin's Creed and God of War, the clothes of Versace, TV, and innumerable graphic art books. Medusa's head has a special place in modern popular imagination. Those familiar with art history have also probably seen various interpretations of Medusa's image, from the ancient Medusa as Artemis Temple in Corfu to the beheaded Medusa of Carvaggio, other times as a powerful nightmarish villain, and others as a symbol of dangerous or fearless femininity. Medusa never ceases to fascinate and inspire. Greek mythology is a nice imaginary place, unless you are a woman, and more specifically, an attractive woman. Before turning into the monster that she was, Medusa was a beautiful young woman. To her bad luck, she was beautiful enough to become Poseidon's object of desire. The god of the sea, the R word, Medusa, inside the temple of Athena, according to the Roman poet Ovid. However, many scholars argue that he, that we have no evidence that the intercourse between Medusa and Poseidon was not consensual. Indeed, the Greek sources never mention Medusa being R word. Only Ovid talks about the sea god violating the young woman, and not everyone agrees with this translation of the original text. In any case, Athena had to avenge her house's desecration. However, Poseidon was immortal and older than her. Therefore, Medusa had to take the punishment even though she was the victim. Athena turned Medusa from a beautiful maiden into a hideous beast, unable to stare someone in the eye without turning them into stone. The hair that once attracted compliments as the source of her beauty became venomous snakes. Medusa was now a gorgon. There are many different versions of Medusa's tale, from archaic Greeks, from archaic Greece to late antiquity. These different versions did not only record different storylines, but also offered varying descriptions of Medusa's appearance. The Library of Apollo Apollodorus was written sometime during the second century and is considered one of the canonical versions of Medusa's story. Apollodorus writes that the Gorgons had, amongst others, tusks and golden wings. Quoted, heads twined about with the scales of dragons and great tusks like swines and brazen heads and golden wings by which they flew. Still, the best place to look for a description of the Gorgon Medusa's appearance is ancient art. In the archaic Greek period, Medusa's head was extremely popular as decoration with apotropic abilities on houses, temples, and various objects including ceramics. This was known as the Gorgonian and was typically a, car a cartoonish spherical head with big wide eyes and open mouth with tongue and tusks showing. The Gorgion has been called a mask of terror and no one can tell if the myth preceded the Gorgion or the Gorgion the myth. Stephen Wilk, who wrote a book on the Medusa, believes that the Gorgian was an archetypal image of the dead. To support this theory, he offered parables from cultures across time and space. In any case, Medusa's head for centuries appeared unnaturally large and round, bringing to mind Pindar's Pythian Ode 12, where the Greek poet spoke of the fair-cheeked Medusa. The most important ancient depiction of Medusa is at least in the author's personal opinion, the one from the Temple of Artemis in Corfu dating to the 6th century BCE, from the Hellenistic period onward. Artists reimagined Medusa as a woman with slightly different eyes and snakes for hair. With time, Medusa transitioned from a horrible beast to a dangerously beautiful woman, which is how most people know her 
through the 20th and 21st century visual art. If you thought that Athena was done with Medusa after turning her into a gorgon, you are mistaken. Though she was the goddess of wisdom, Athena was a rare example of cold-bloodedness and cruelty even for the Greek gods. Athena held a grudge against Medusa and was not satisfied even after punishing her. So when the hero Perseus was tasked with bringing Medusa's head to the king of Sephiros, Polydictus, Athena gladly offered her help. In the end, Perseus successfully slayed the Gorgon Medusa, but was he really the one who killed her? If we look at the myth closely, we will realize that Athena was the true mastermind, but this will become evident in my next section. Before confronting Medusa, Perseus equipped himself with an adamantine sickle, a kibis, um, a bag or wallet to place Medusa's head in, the helmet of Hades, which could make its wearer invisible, and a set of winged sandals lent by Mercury, or for Greek, Hermes. Acquiring these objects was no easy task. Alone, Perseus would not even come close to obtaining them, but the hero had Athena's help. She led him to the three Graiae, who knew the secret location of Stygian nymphs. After tricking the Graiae, Perseus found the nymphs who equipped him with all the objects mentioned previously. Additionally, Athena gave him a shield. Perseus left the Gorgon Medusa's cave where he found her sleeping with the other Gorgons. Approaching silently, he turned his back to the monster to avoid looking at her directly. Instead, he used either his golden sword or the shield that Athena had given him as a mirror to sneak close to his target and decapitate her with his sickle. With quick moves, he took the head, placed it in his bag, used Hades' helmet to become invisible, and used the winged sandals to fly away from the Gorgons who were chasing after him. When Perseus took Medusa's head, we are told that something extraordinary happened. When Medusa was our word by Poseidon, it seems that she got pregnant, but for some reason never gave birth. Consequently, when her head was removed, two children sprang from the opening. These were Chrysor and Pegasus. Chrysor became the father of the three-headed or three-bodied giant Grayon, who is mainly known through his fight with Hercules. Pegasus was a winged horse and one of the most famous mythological beings. So why did Gorgon Medusa give birth to a horse? Thus must have to do with the fact that Poseidon was, amongst others, the god of horses. Quote, and now to terrify her enemies, numbing them with fear, the goddess wears the snakes that she created as a breastplate. Ovid. After Perseus returned to Seraphos, his mission was complete. There was no reason for him to carry Medusa's head any longer. Besides, Athena was now interested in it. The goddess of wisdom took the head of her sworn enemy and placed it either on her Aegeus, or shield, or armor. This way, she appropriated Medusa's powers and proclaimed her triumph. Athena, a goddess of civilization and an idealized role model for the virtuous woman within the patriarchal Greek society, had finally exterminated the threat of the dangerous Medusa, a symbol of the power of the natural and the feminine. Nowadays, some people think Medusa might actually be a feminist icon. In some versions of the myth, Athena turned her into a monster as a favor, protecting her from creepy admirers by giving her a way to fight back. In New York, you can even see a statue of Medusa holding Perseus's head. According to legend, Medusa spent some time in Africa. Whilst on holiday, snakes supposedly fell from her head and started a new life there. This apparently explains why there are so many venomous snakes in Africa, because they descended from Medusa's hairdo. An interesting idea, but you won't find many snake scientists who will agree with you. A couple natural facts that have Medusa as inspiration for them are the Medusa pepper is a type of sweet chili pepper that grows upwards and looks a little bit like a head of a snake. Unlike what you might expect, Medusa peppers are actually really mild, and even when they're bright red and ripe, you could probably eat a fair few without breaking a sweat. Jellyfish are in the scientific group Medusozoa, which is a big group of jelly-like sea animals. This is because of the long dangly threads that hang below them, which are also often poisonous, so a bit like Medusa's hair. 
The form an adult jellyfish takes is also called a medusa, and it's a stage in their quite complicated life cycle. Medusa continues to be a center of attraction because of her mystical tales. Learning about the facts about Medusa would always challenge the myths and misconceptions that we had before. The myths about Medusa are fascinating and have a lot of symbolism about her beauty as a young woman to become a monster. Her figure has continued to be used in the modern day to protect and empower women in society. For countless decades to come, Medusa's legacy as a representation of strength, change, and resilience will amaze and motivate people. Well, there you have it. Some interesting facts about Medusa. Did you learn something new? Was this all old information? Let me know of any other interesting facts about Medusa you know in the comments below. If you like what you heard or saw, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. As always, remember to eat well, sleep well, and stay hydrated. Bye!